So I'm finally getting the main spindle installed in the lathe. This actually went smoother than the secondary shaft that had probably even more gears and stuff attached to it. It only took like three or four times putting the shaft in and out before I finally got all the pieces in in the right order and right orientation. So not too bad. I did have some difficulty getting the shaft to line up right. Uh, it turned out that this ring here slid on the shaft when I was trying to remove it. So it, it just took a little bit of tapping to get it back in place. Here it's mostly seated already, but I uh, didn't film it when it was really far off. So I finally got the main shaft all together. All the pieces inside the gear case are in now. Um, I still have the outside bearings and spacers and stuff to put on, but the inside stuff is all set. One thing which tripped me up a little bit was there's a spacer that goes on the shaft between this gear and the bearing. And I wasn't sure exactly where that went in my order because it's all hidden in here. So you take it apart, it just sort of all falls apart. Um, but that goes between the bearing and this big gear. So in addition to getting the spacer here between this main gear and the bearing in here in the right spot, um, was there's an oil sling ring inside here and when I was moving, driving the shaft in and out, I uh, dislodged that. So the bearing was not sitting all the way up against the end of the shaft like it should. So it shifted the whole shaft down forward. So my gears didn't line up so I could tell something was wrong. But I'm ready to start putting this back in permanently. I need to put the pins in here and the set screws in to hold this ring. And then that should hold everything in for the shaft. So we should be pretty much set in here. I still need to finish doing the input shaft here. Um, this spacer this is the one where I had to turn down the face to make it nice and flat. So now there's too much play in here. So I need to um, get some shims for this one. So the shims will space it out. So this is it, the last bearing piece I need to install. Of course, I'll probably have to take them all apart and put them back in again a couple of times. but. Um, that's the last one, that's the last cone. Everything else is now um, you know, ready to go. Another thing I need to fix is this crack here. It was right into the keyway. This is one of the spacers for the back. Um, I thought that it might be okay just using it like this, but as I was tightening it, tightening it down, this started to widen up. So I'm gonna V that out a little bit and just TIG weld that. Rather not make a whole new one of these. With the two internal keyways, would be kind of a pain. Um, I don't have a good setup to do internal keyways. I realized I missed getting footage of installing these. They're just two lock rings with set screws to lock them in place. Uh, this is the ring that I had to weld up because it there's some keys in here which key everything together and so there needs to be a spacer because so these obviously can't have keys if they're locking it in place. So I've got 
these tightened up, locked in. I've got my 2000s of end play set. So, should be good to go. So this was going to be a simple operation that has now turned slightly more complicated. Basically, this face had a big groove in it for where the bearing side was worn in there. So I wanted to make this face nice and flat for the bearing to sit against. Now, what's really important here, or most important, is that these two faces are parallel. The back and the front, or front and back, depending on which way you think about it. Now, I just chucked it up in the lathe, held it here, um, faced it down, and then miked here, and it's not at all close. It's off by five thousandths or so. So that's quite a bit, and that'll make my bearing preload weird. It will would probably be okay-ish because it's on the input shaft and not a shaft that matters for precision, like if it was a main bearing, main headstock shaft, it would definitely matter. But I want it better than that. So what I'm going to actually try to do is chuck it up this way in the lathe, and then see if this face is running true and if it is I will face this section because I think this is just I mean it's machined but it's probably not that precisely done the outside here so if I get this a nice smooth face that's perpendicular to this other one I should be able to hold it, off, hold it off there to return this side in here so we'll see I'm gonna get it chucked up and try doing some measurements so as one might expect, oh actually, oh well, no I can't do that. Um, as one might expect, the, um, the jaws need to be switched. So this side holds in this way, and that side has to hold that way. And so I need to switch my inside outside jaws. Of course it has to be the sides that, that it's in between, so I've got to switch them between operations. So chucked up this way, now I've got one thousandths run out on this face. And the outside's all over the place. Let's see what the inside's like. So this is part of my problem that I'm having with the thing. I forgot that this lathe has five thousandths of end play. <laughs> so if I don't keep this pressed up tight, then all my measurements are worthless. So that's five, five thousandths that way. A little bit over, probably six. That's actually worse than the other direction. So, so I think I'll go back to the other jaws. Okay, now with careful tapping, it's pretty close to just a thousandth out, so I'm going to run with that, I guess. Yep, it's all off. So now we need to make sure that we've got it cut right, which 
I think we did, as good as we're going to get. So I have a dial indicator set up on the input shaft. I shortened that inner block that had some wear in it, so I need to add in shims, and normally they'd go behind the plate, um, the cover plate, to make the because the shaft is typically too long and you have to shim the bearings away. But this time the shaft is now too short, so it, I need to put shims in the middle of the shaft. Um, but you can see that if I push on it, it's at zero and then goes up to about seven and back. So I'm supposed to get around two or three thousandths of end play, and I've got seven now. I got the assorted pack of shims from McMaster Car, so these are all different thicknesses. So I should be able to find one that works. So I've got the shim in, and it goes to to zero, so I've got two thousandths of end play, and that feels good for that shaft. So I forgot to put in the oil pump. It would go in really easy without the main shaft in, but now with this attached here, you gotta snake it all around. So I'm gonna try holding this up there, snaking it under, then, then, yeah, and that can bend a little bit. I have these pins now safety wired in, so they just get driven in and then you wrap safety wire around them so that they don't pop back out again. To drive them in so I didn't mangle them up, not that it really matters, is I threaded in the bolt and tapped on the bolt so that I didn't mangle up the threads because you really need these threads to get these pins out. Without them, I don't know how you do it. You'd have to drill a new hole and put a bolt in. So. Now all I need to do in here is get the input shaft, um, there's a clutch shifter mechanism and a brake that needs to go through here and get set up and then I also need to run the oil lines and get those all set. And then everything in here needs to be you know, pre-lubed and stuff before I actually run it. So I gotta squirt oil and everything and make sure that it's, everything's all oily before I power it up. I also wanna make sure that the metering valves that I have for the pump to, to feed the right amount of oil out to all the bearings actually still work. I got new ones before this project started, but with the amount of sludge in here, they certainly could have been plugged up. Although I didn't run in the lathe all that much, but I wanna make sure that they work before I put the whole thing back together again. So this rod is what goes through the input shaft and pulls on the clutch and doesn't engages and disengages it. And it has this break here that goes into this cone to stop the input shaft or stop the whole machine. And it doesn't fit through the case. The, at least this, this break part doesn't. So I'm gonna try I, to get it apart, I was able to tap this brake thing off. 
So maybe I'll just do it that way. I was thinking about trying to remove this whole block, but I'm thinking now that I can just, I'll try putting it back together the same way I took it apart. Um, because I can just seat this in this cup and tap that way and it should seat itself nicely. Before that though, I do need to put in the key in here. There's a key that goes in that gets screwed in place via little set screws. So that needs to get installed. I'm finally ready to put the lid on this thing and start working on getting the clutch fixed. So, got seven quarts of SAE 30 in here. That's what it said to use, um, 30 weight oil. Um, check to see that the pump works. I worked the thing and oil comes out because I had replaced these metering valves, little oil meters, before I started this. But with the amount of sludge in the bottom of here, I figured that they could have been plugged up again, but they were all okay. So I've got everything safety wired. These pins are safety wired in. This was safety wired. It's not the neatest job, but it should be fine. All the set screws are tight, all the rings, so everything's set. All the shifters work. That one, that one. They all engage properly. So I'm all set to go. It did take some adjustment when I first got this lathe to get all the shift levers working correctly. And after taking it apart, they all still work correctly. So should be good to go. Um, obviously there's still more to do in this project, but um, at least the gearbox is all done. I wanted to get this back together before I started taking apart anything else because I don't need that many pieces around. This is enough pieces to deal with. Covers all on the lathe. I should be done inside the gearbox until you know. I'm gonna run it for a bit and then check the check everything out inside, make sure it's still looking good. But should be done inside. Next step is the clutch assembly. Well, I'll clean up first, but the clutch assembly that had some worn parts, some weird springs floating around, and some other oddities. So. That's the next thing. I also need to do bearings on the motor, but that should be fairly simple. But clean up all my crap and get started on the next project. So next part of this project. So in the next video, I'm going to tackle getting the clutch to work properly. It ended up being a much bigger project than what I thought it was going to be. I thought that just needed a couple little adjustment things and some new springs, but there was some more problems and oddities that I wasn't expecting to have to deal with. Well, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, 
and check out the rest of my videos.